So I'm here to tell you that I had a whole baby whilst I was getting my PhD and I lived to tell the story. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about having a baby whilst doing your PhD. I'll talk about what was hard about it, what was not so hard about it, and give you some tips on how to get through your grad program, your PhD program, if you do happen to find yourself in that similar situation. I started grad school in 2009. I got married in 2011 and in 2013 I had a baby and this was between my fourth and fifth years that I had my child. Now um, I want to first of all say that I had an amazingly supportive PI or principal investigator um, as we call it in the US advisor <laughs> in other countries she was super helpful she was a mom herself and um, understood a lot of the things I was going through physiologically anatomically and so was really really um, supportive this however did not mean that I still wasn't expected to work or fulfill my responsibilities in the lab as a PhD student. And I think that's the first lesson there. And to be honest, in hindsight, I see that I had a fairly easy pregnancy. I didn't get a lot of the um, symptoms that come with pregnancy, like morning sickness and um, weakness. I didn't get a whole lot of that, especially during my first two trimesters. And even in my last trimester, I wasn't till like the last month that I was really tired and really, <laughs> and really big, you know, really, really pregnant. That was when I really felt the pregnancy. So for the first like six to seven, almost eight months, I was fine. And so this allowed me to continue going to work normally. The thing though that I would notice was that I, I, I got sleepy a lot. And so when I would try to read papers, <laughs> I'd, I'd, you know, I'd fall asleep. And, you know, this is, if this happens to you, I just want to assure you that you're not alone. Like, it's not because you're being lazy. It's really a thing. <laughs> okay, so don't be so bugged by it. One of the things that I really, I did that I know helped me is I planned things out. Um, I knew at that time I was in the middle of a big project that we were writing grants to get money for. It ended up being a really good project that got published in very good journals. And so during that time, I was still running experiments for these for this particular project. So I made sure to plan my days and I made sure that at the beginning of my pregnancy, I did a lot of the heavy things. So I remember uh, processing a lot of RNA from tissue um, <laughs> at the very early part of my pregnancy. So almost every day, I you know I had all these tissue samples in the fruit and the minus 80 degree uh, fridge where I take them out and then I'd extract RNA and then I'd run all these PCR reactions. And so um, I really did try at that early, earlier point in my pregnancy to do a whole bunch of experiments so that later on, and especially when I did take maternity leave, that it wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't have left so much work behind. Now, speaking of maternity leave, I know that this works differently in different institutions. I know there are some places where if you do get pregnant, it like it's the prerogative of your boss if they want to continue paying you or if they want to default to what in some instances is 70% income. Now, maybe you're listening to me like what it's like for those of us in the sciences and the medical sciences, a lot of the our degrees, the PhD is fully funded. So you'll get a stipend, you get paid a stipend, um, you, t you get some tuition assistance as well. Um, and you're being paid usually from the funds of your advisor. So depending on the institution you are at, you may still get paid when you're on maternity leave or you may not get paid. I found this very surprising. Thankfully, I was at a place where my boss agreed to pay me whilst I was on maternity leave. I would still, we would still send emails back and forth 
even during maternity leave but by and large i was able to stay home for about two months after my pregnancy and actually after six weeks six weeks after i had my baby i had to go for a conference where i, I was presenting a poster so i did go for that and to be honest at that point i was just i was really kind of ready to <laughs> to leave the house because all i had been doing at that point is being pregnant having a baby changing diapers so i was kind of ready to go out there and do something else so going to that conference was no biggie um but i did need that extra two weeks so i came back took an extra two weeks and then went back to work but through it all my advisor was really supportive another thing that was helpful to me is that my husband was also really supportive and i think that this is really important that you get a support system if you've watched a few of my videos here that i've done on getting the eb2 visa you know i migrated to the us from ghana in west africa i've been here since 2003 and for most immigrants, most of the time, your family is not around to help you when you do have a baby. So I didn't have any family, extra family support. I had definitely had friends who had become like family and I had my husband and people chipped in here and there. But by and large, my husband was really, really instrumental. And I think, um, yeah, actually when I did have my baby, my mother traveled from Ghana to the US to help me for a little bit, which was such a big blessing but my husband was really supportive as well um, and he helped me he really did he really supported me um even at night with feedings and stuff like that so i think that um maybe you know you're watching this and you don't have that um i i i can't even imagine i just want to say i can't even imagine what that is like but i will encourage you to find ways like find ways to get support especially during the day um if you know think about your school does your school have some way for kids to be taken care of um i know that some universities have some sort of child care facilities you may want to look into that um you know it's 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 really is hard and i i realized that when i had my son if i didn't have the support system i probably would have quit and i'm sure it's happened to some women who have had to quit because they didn't have support systems but i will say that if you are able to get any kind of support system please do um because your advisor may be supportive but if you don't have a support system around you then it becomes really really difficult um and so fight for it i don't know how but um fight to get a support system one thing that's going to be important for you to remember if you do get pregnant whilst you're getting your phd is not to sweat it it's not the end of the world your life is <laughs> you know your life is not destroyed because you've gotten pregnant i know that in academia people try to treat it as such but that's not true and i want you to know that i want you to know that you being pregnant is not a crime as you are getting your phd it may mean that you have to find extra support it may mean that you have to ask for time um it may mean a lot of things i had to um you know ask for time off to go to the hospital for my monthly checkups it may mean all of these things the biggest thing is planning ahead and when i did plan ahead it ended up working out really well and I ended up having a very, very smooth, um, you know, having a baby, going back to the lab and continuing almost as if I never had a baby. Now, when the child comes into your life, they also change your life a whole lot. And so now I wasn't able to stay in the lab for longer periods of time and so on and so forth. And so I know there's this argument out there in the world of academics as for women especially as to whether having a child is worth it or not and i challenge you to answer that question personally for yourself if you want to have a child then you are at liberty to have a child and i really do believe that it is possible even if you're doing a phd to have a baby if you really do think that having a baby at that time is not going to um, be helpful for you because you want to concentrate on your degree and finish that then do that but I do know that things do happen and when they do happen you know um, I believe that you take things in stride and realize that it's not the end of the world and not to sweat it there is there is help out there and 
you can get it. So that was my experience and I just wanted to share it um, with you. Um, let me know in the comments below, have you had the experience of being pregnant and being in grad school? Or are you currently pregnant and in grad school? Or have you been thinking of starting a family while in grad school? Let me know in the comments below.